This is Inside Yale Football, brought to you by Yale All Access. Hello everyone, Ron Vaccaro welcoming you inside the Kippeth Trophy Room at Payne Whitney Gym and welcoming you to a new season of Inside Yale Football. Over the next 10 weeks we'll have interviews with coaches and players and special guests and alumni and really try and get inside the stories that are happening in and around the Yale football team. And we start with the head coach of the Bulldogs, Tom Williams. Coach, finally, after a long offseason, 42 <laughs> weeks, it's, it's game week, yes. Georgetown, the opponent coming up this Saturday. Um, let's talk first, a bigger picture perspective. Mm -hmm. This is your third season here. Yes. And I think anyone who's followed the team, whether it be just watching them or going to practices, your stamp is fully on this team. It's branded. Well, we think that this is finally our team. You know, as I said to our staff when we started fall camp, this is the first time it's actually felt like these guys are our guys. The freshmen and sophomores that we inherited have grown up in our system, and then the two recruiting classes that we've had have become acclimated to what we're doing. So uh, it feels like the, these guys are ours and we're ready to move forward. And, and it's nice to have that feeling because uh, there's complete investment by all 110 guys on our team. Your team's slogan this year is armed and dangerous. Mm. So I guess that makes you ammunitions distributor or something. <laughs> but with, with, the, with the weapons you've got on both sides of the ball, mm -hmm. and a lot of times people talk about weapons on offense, yes. but you've got weapons on both sides of the ball. Sure. And sure. on special teams, as yes. we're seeing. Yeah. Um, you know, talk about you know, what you've seen on the, on the practice fields that, since, since the middle of August, really. Well, the, the, the point that you made about having the weapons is exactly what we think we have. We are more explosive than we've ever been. We've got uh, guys that can go and get deep balls. We've got running backs that can go all the way to the house on a, on a touch on a running play. But we've got defensive players that can make impact plays as well. You know, guys like Will McHale, our captain, I mean, excuse me, Jordan Haynes, our captain, but his lieutenant, I call him Will McHale, who's also a fantastic football player. We've got Pat Moran back up front and Jake Stoller and Reed Spiller, uh, Jeff Dunham, who's a great football player. And then in the return game, in our special teams, we've got Chris Smith, who we led the country in, uh, in return yardage last year in the kickoff return, and he's back again as a junior. Seems like he's been here forever. Uh, and then Gio Cristodulo is a punt returner, and Deion Randall is a punt returner. So we feel like that in our return teams, we can be explosive. Uh, we feel like offensively, we've got a chance to stretch the field a lot more than we did the last couple of years. And then defensively, and then our coverage teams in the kicking game, we feel like we can be stifling and stingy. You mentioned Jordan Haynes, the team captain. Uh, describe him a little bit as, as a player and as you've come to know him over the past few years. Well, we've been fortunate to have two great captains in Paul Rice and Tommy McCarthy. And I would say Jordan is a combination of both of those guys. You know, not only is he a, a fiery leader like a Paul Rice, uh, but he's also a very cerebral football player like Tommy McCarthy. Uh, and the guys rally around him. He's one of those guys, he's like E.F. Hutton. When he speaks, everybody listens. And, uh, and he backs it up on the football field. So I think he gives us a little bit more of an edge and an emotional presence as the captain. And uh, this is certainly his football team. We're sitting here in the Kippeth Trophy Room and I've, I've never been one for subtlety. So <laughs> what, what do you think uh, it might take to you know, add some hardware from uh, the 2011 Bulldogs to the well, space behind I, us? I'll tell you what, that's our number one goal. We wanna make sure that we can add to the trophy case. And uh, I would say to a man, we are committed to doing our very best to make that happen this year. You talked last year a lot about season one, 2009, mm -hmm. being really your first tour around the league, seeing what it would take. And you yeah. pointed to the Penn game that year saying you knew that th that was when you had a real idea. You bet. And then last year, the season, the way it goes, so close in games that you won and so close in games that you didn't win. Sure. You, did you really feel like you were just maybe one step, one step away? Absolutely. You know, we lost three games by, by a total of 17 points, I believe. So... Uh, I thought those lessons that we learned, as you said, in victory and defeat uh, made a difference for this, this team. And I think people have to understand there's an evolution to winning football games. You know, first of all, you've got to play in close games to understand what it's like, what it takes to win. And then you've got to win a couple of them so that you understand what that's like. And then last year we were able to do that, and then you lose those close ones. And now you know that extra play or two that you need to make to get over the top. And I think with 16 returning starters for this year's team, uh, in 2011, we have a very good understanding of what it takes to win football games, and I think our guys are primed and ready to do that. I'm not going to try and speak for anyone on the team, but I went to probably 90% of your practices <laughs> so far this year, yes. and a lot of times the, the August camps are, are viewed around the country, wherever it is, as you know, grueling dog days, and certainly there was tons of hard work being done. 
but you guys also had a focus on teaching yes. and on having fun. Yes. And why don't you, you know, tell the fans who probably haven't been to the practice field, you know, <laughs> what a typical day is like in the, in the summer camp and leading up to the start of the season. Well, it's a long day, you know, and it starts in the morning at 6.30. The guys are up for breakfast. Uh, we have our first meeting at 8 o'clock a.m. Uh, over in the, paint, or, uh, in the RTH. And then from that, we've got a walkthrough. We've got uh, lunch in the middle of the day, and we start practice at 2 o'clock. After practice, the guys have dinner, and then they come back to uh, the RTH for more meetings. And, and a lot of times during camp, as you know, we have a special speaker that will come by and talk to the guys about something that I think is important for them to learn, whether it be how to deal with the media, and, and you've been great in talking to them about that. Uh, we have our police chief, Chief Higgins, comes by and talks to them about the relationship our team has with the Yale community. And, and so it's a very full day. Uh, but the fun, as you mentioned, is something I think is important because, because of the grueling nature of football, you got to mix in some fun. So we had popsicles one day, you know, we've had the coaches catch punts at the end of practice so the players can get a chance to watch how unathletic we are as coaches. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, we just, we have pizza parties at night uh, to, to, to make sure that we build some camaraderie. And I think the best thing we did this year, Ron, in terms of team building, is we divided our team up into groups of 10 or 11 and we told our life stories. We got a chance to really get to know each other. And I thought that added an extra dimension to our team in terms of chemistry. One of the other fun things you did was go to the tennis tournament across the street and uh, Rory McIlroy, uh, yeah. who's with Carolyn Wozniacki, uh, yeah. put on a Yale football jersey. And I know the players were thrilled to be part of that. They absolutely loved it. Uh, our guys are hams. You know, anytime you put a camera in front of them, they, they definitely put on a show. But uh, there are a lot of broken hearts now in blue jerseys, guys that were interested in, in uh, trying to uh, gain Caroline's attention <laughs> were broken hearted when they saw Rory. But that was a very fun night. We took them bowling one night and divided the team up and uh, competed into a, in a bowling tournament one night. So, yeah, as you said, fun is what we're all about. Uh, obviously, when it's time to work, we work as hard as anybody. Uh, but to an, actually enjoy the process, you got to mix in some fun. All right, Coach, uh, we thank you for taking the time out in a game week to talk to us. And we look forward to having you back as often as you come throughout the season. And I guess the final question would be, you know, what, what are you going to be looking for um, on Saturday? You know, what do you want to see when you look at what happens? Well, the, the difficult uh, thing that we find playing two weeks later than Georgetown is that they've had an opportunity to get a lot of the kinks out of their system, right? Whether it's uh, play clock issues or signals from the sideline or substitutions, those types of uh, things that usually show up in the first game, they've already gone through that. So we hope that the scrimmage we had last week against Dean gives us an opportunity to get those things out of our system. So I'd like to see us come out and be crisp offensively, take care of the football, uh, throw and catch the ball the way we've done all during camp. And uh, defensively, again, I, I anticipate us being stifling and, and nasty uh, on defense. And I think our, our special teams, as, you, as you've pointed out, we have a chance to be explosive uh, and change the field and we look forward to doing that. That should be a weapon for us this year. All right, thanks a lot. That's Yale head coach Tom Williams.